I don't know about you, but I am appalled that this Operation Mobilization would put you in charge of parties. <laughs> just, just shocked. Shocked, shocked. So, well, if you have a Bible this morning, and I hope you do, turn to Psalm 47. And we are going to look into God's Word for a few moments. And Ross and Jane, thank you so much for coming and sharing your lives with us. And uh, it is always good to see you. Always fun. Psalm 47, we're going to just read through verses 1 through 9. And he read the first couple verses in the beginning of the service, but we'll read them again. Psalm 47, verse 1 says, Clap your hands, all peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is to be feared, a great king over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves, Selah. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our king, sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing praises with a psalm. God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. This is God's word. Psalm 47 is a psalm of praise, if you didn't catch that in the reading. Uh, it would later be used in many of uh, Israel's New Year's celebrations. It is a psalm which is actually celebrating the victory of a great king. And two different ideas have come out of what possibly was the historical context of this psalm. One is that it may have been written to celebrate the victory of King Jehoshaphat that we, read about in, we can read about in 2 Chronicles 20. Judah was facing attack from the countries of Ammon and Moab. And the Lord worked this great victory for them. And it's interesting, he worked this victory as they prayed and worshipped and praised God fought for them. And so after the victory, the Bible tells us what Judah did. It says, Then, led by Jehoshaphat, all the men of Judah and Jerusalem returned joyfully to Jerusalem. For the Lord had given them cause to rejoice over their enemies. They entered Jerusalem and went to the temple of the Lord with harps and lyres and trumpets. So that's one possible context. The other idea is that it may have been written uh, to celebrate the defeat of the Assyrian king Sennacherib during the days of King Hezekiah. Now this, if you remember from last week, is actually the historical context of Psalm 46. And many, including me, think that this is probably the context of this psalm as well. What you see, it's interesting how they tie together. In Psalm 46, we are told in the middle of the battle that we are to be still and know that he is God. But after the victory, in Psalm 47, 1, we are called to clap our hands and to shout with, to God with loud shouts of joy because the victory had been won. I mean, that just makes perfect contextual sense to me. But either way, there's also a prophetic element here to this psalm. And, and while this psalm celebrates the victory of an earthly king, it also looks forward prophetically to the ascension of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, as he was sit on his throne, and it celebrates his reign over the whole earth. So as we read through this psalm, it becomes evident that the intention of the writer was to inspire God's people to praise him enthusiastically and often. In fact, five times, just in verses 5 and 6, or 6 and 7, excuse me, you see this refrain, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise to the Lord who reigns over the nations. And so the first thing that, we, that is really clear in this psalm is this, is that it talks about the importance of praise in verse 1 and verses 6 and 7. Now, have you ever wondered why we do things like have mission teams reports or have missionaries come and give uh, updates? We think, well, it's to communicate what has happened, and that's a part of it. We certainly want good communication, but it's not just to tell what happened on a trip. The idea is so that we as a church can rejoice and praise God together for how he has worked in the lives of people. 
And the reason we do that is shown to us in this psalm because God has given us the command to praise him. It says in verses 6 and 7, sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our God, sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing praises with a psalm. And actually, this command from God to praise God is actually common to both the Old and New Testaments. In fact, approximately 250 times in the Bible, we are commanded to praise God. It is one of the most often repeated commands in the entire Bible. Yet, as common as that command is given to us, I think sometimes we do misunderstand a lot about praise. Sometimes we think this, we kind of think that if we say or sing the words praise the Lord or hallelujah, which is a Hebrew word which means praise the Lord, we think that if we say those things, well then we've praised God. But to understand this concept, uh, I want to think about pr- human praise. JJ, come here for a minute. Um, now, come here, buddy. Yes. He went, he went like this. Stand down there so you're not taller than me. <laughs> Do you know what this guy told? He was at camp this week, and the kids were asking, well, you know, who do you look like in your family? He says, basically, I'm a bigger version of my dad. <laughs> you believe that? A bigger version. Jay said, don't you mean smaller? He said, no, I mean bigger. <laughs> so anyway. Well, let's say J.J. wanted to come and praise me. He would not come up to me and say, praise dad. If he did, I'd wonder what Janine put in his cornflakes that morning. And wonder, or I'd wonder what kind of money he wants, you know what I mean? No, if he was going to praise me, which, by the way, you should do every once in a while, you know what I mean? He would come up to me and say, dad, thank you for being such a, a cool, awesome dad. Would you say that to me? Oh, come on. Or, or something, to be more, a little more, Dad, I appreciate that you always take time to listen to me, that you care for me, that you provide for me. Thank you, Dad. That would be praise. It wouldn't just be saying, praise, Dad. That would be weird. But he would take the time to actually talk about some of my attributes and some of the things that I've done and show his gratitude for it. That would be praising me, right? Yeah. So you're going to do that this afternoon, right? They're gone. Oh, that's right. We're, it's our anniversary. We're going on a little trip, so no calls for the next couple of days, okay? Um, but that's what praise, thank you. Give him a hand. JJ, good job. That would be what praising would be, right? And so understand, the command to praise God is just that. It is a command to praise Him. And we do that by saying praiseworthy things about Him. I mean, you find it all over the Scripture. Listen to some verses. Psalm 117 says, Praise the Lord, all nations. Extol him, all peoples, for great is his steadfast love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Isaiah 25, O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things, plans from old, faithful and sure. Jeremiah 20, sing to the Lord. Praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hand of the evildoers. Luke chapter 18 says, And immediately after he recovered his sight and followed Jesus, they were glorifying God, and all the people, when they saw it, gave praise to God. But, but notice the commands, too. Hebrews chapter 13, I'll show this verse on the screen, says this, That through him, speaking of Jesus, then let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God, That is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. Or how about this one? You're probably familiar with this, but it's so powerful. Psalm 150. Listen to these words. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet and sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with the tambourine and dance. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. I mean, could that command to praise him be any clearer? It's just given over and over. But not only do we see this command to praise God in verse in this psalm, but in verse 1, it talks about specifically the expression of our praise. It says this, Clap your hands, all peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. 
Now think about that for a minute. The clapping of hands and shouting is because you want to draw attention to something, right? I mean, the clapping of hands, it's, it's usually, it's an outward expression of an inward joy. And, and if you understand, I appreciated the song today that was kind of had the Hebrew flair to it. Hebrew worship was exciting. It was, it was energetic. It was passionate. And, and at first glance, when you look at this verse about clapping your hands and shouting, especially the idea of clapping your hands, you'd get the idea that maybe God is telling us to go like this. Right? But the Hebrew idiom, to clap the hands, also carries with it the idea of striking hands with another individual, confirming something we agree together about. It's celebrating communal joy. In other words, it's really the idea of giving high fives to one another. That's the idea of clapping here. And, and, and it makes perfect sense in this psalm because in verse 2 it describes God as a great king over all the earth. And so the praise that is called for in this psalm is a community praise. Now let me see if I can illustrate it for you. How many of you remember where you were or what you were doing on January 14th of this year? Anybody know? January 14th, 2018. Anybody remember? Anybody have a photograph of it? Do you remember? Oh, uh, he got it. January 14th, 2018. You were probably glued to your television set watching the Minnesota Vikings play the, the New Orleans Saints in the NFL Divisional Playoffs, right? You remember, how many of you remember that? They call it what? The Minneapolis Miracle, right? I remember talking with Joe afterwards. He was like, I was just sure we had lost that game again. I was confident. I was ready to turn the TV off. Nothing ever goes our way. And then, here's what happened. Remember with me. With 10 seconds left in the game, on their own 39-yard line, Case Keenum drops back, and he throws a pass to Stefan Diggs near the right sideline. He caught the ball and was going to step out of bounds. But if you remember what happened, the Saints defender missed the tackle. And there was no one between him and the end zone. So he quickly turned and ran. And as time ran out, he crossed the end zone and won the game for the Minnesota Vikings. How many of you remember that and the feeling you felt there? You know, I, I got to tell you. Do you think people were excited about that? Let me show you a picture of JJ when that happened. You need to count this picture. <laughs> that was literally, she just had her phone ready. You got to be careful in my house because she's always got that phone ready with pictures and videos. She's got some blackmail things on me on her phone that I don't want any of you to know about. She caught that. And, and so later on, JJ began to show me videos of people that people had kind of filmed the reaction of people here in Minnesota when that happened. And you know what happened in each one of them? People would see it. They would probably look like that picture of JJ. But then they would do this. They would kind of go, and they immediately looked for someone to high five. They were running going, ah, ah. They were, I mean, they were going, Minnesotans withdraw. I mean, calm, gentle Minnesotans were going crazy. They were high-fiving everybody. You know why? Because they wanted to share that joy. It was incredible. I mean, that week, I remember people that don't even really watch football all that much were coming up to me and saying, did you see it? And I'd be like, did I see what? What are you talking about? I don't know. They wanted to share that joy because it was something to celebrate and praise. Now, think about it. David Guzik once said this. He said, Specific of, of this verse, he said, Most people are not against shouting or enthusiastic outbursts. They simply believe there is a right and wrong place for such shouting. And sadly, many who think a loud exclamation is fine at a football game think it is a scandal in the church. Isn't that sad? Folks, let me tell you this. If you get anything else today, understand this. Praise is meant to be shared in fact, why don't we just all say that together? Praise is meant to be shared. I mean, that's the idea of it. That's the bottom line. And we as God's people have so much to praise God about. It is good for us to praise God. It is commanded for us to praise God. Psalm 107 verse 2 says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from trouble. How many of you this morning could say that God has redeemed your soul? that your sins have been forgiven, that your eternal destiny is no longer hell, but is heaven in eternity with God. How many of you could give praise to that today? I mean, think about it. So in your bulletin, I asked you a question. 
I said, what can you praise God about today? Three things. See, it is time for us as a church family to praise God. And I'll start. But, but this is an opportunity for us as a church family to give praise to God. And, and let me just say this. I have the rest of my sermon completed. Okay? But if we obeyed God and we spent the rest of the service giving praise to Him and I never got back to my notes, I'd be okay with it. And I have a sneaky suspicion God would be too. And if you're like me and you're OCD, and like, but I won't get my blanks filled in. Come up to me, I'll tell you what they are, okay? <laughs> but let me, let, oh, sorry. I thought about that. I thought if I was there, I'd be going, I want to get my blanks filled in. So let me give you three things. First of all, I got this card this morning. It says, Dear Pastor, your sermon this Sunday made me want to throw up. My hands in praise. <laughs> Thank you so much for your message. And then it says this, with love from your favorite congregation member. And I'm not going to tell you who it is either. <laughs> but I, I praise the Lord, first of all, for his forgiveness. I praise God that there is no sin that we can commit that the blood of Jesus Christ does not cover. I praise God that even though I lived 19 years wasting my life, that Jesus Christ fully forgave every sin and made me his child. Secondly, I thank God for his protection. Last week I came home from, I was driving from Florida all the way back here to Minnesota. I picked up a card uh, that is going to be JJ's, our father-in-law's giving to him, and, and I got in it and I started driving. And originally we were a little concerned about this car. It's a 20-year-old car. We didn't know how would it do on this travel. Stop every couple hours, rest, and... And then maybe we should take four days. We originally planned to take four days to make this trip. And then we thought about it, and we were like, you know what? We can take three. No big deal. And I wanted to go. I didn't want to go around Chicago. I knew I had to go through Atlanta. That was enough for me. And I didn't want to go through Chicago, too. So I said, well, I'll go up through uh, Missouri and up through Iowa. I actually stayed in Hannibal, Missouri, which is where Mark Twain was born. And there were all these Mark Twain things to do. So like a good guy, I went out and had Chinese food. Um, <laughs> but... But uh, anyway, so I wound up driving up, and I got home Wednesday night. So I drove through Iowa on Wednesday. The next day, 27 tornadoes touched down in Iowa. I would have been driving on that day. And I can pick that car up. It's so small. I know a tornado would have had no problem with it. But I thank the Lord for his protection. And then this. I just want to share this as a church family. Last week I made an announcement about children ministry needs specifically relating to Awana and um, needed a teacher and needed someone who would take Todd Johnson's job and do all the all the you know nuts and bolts of handing out awards and things like that and by the end of the service both of those needs were met people had said I will do that I will serve Jesus in that way and so you know what we have a lot to praise God about don't we and so here's what I want to do. I have a microphone here. Hopefully it'll work. Can you turn that on, Daniel? See if it's working there? All right. This is your, as a community, I mean, this is better than a Vikings win. I know that's good. But this is better. We get to praise God together. So who would like this morning to just praise the Lord? Just raise your hand and I'll bring you the microphone and you can stand right where you are. Who's going to start? All the way in the back. All right. Man, you're going to give me exercise, boy, right away. All right. Curtis, here you go. praise God every day because I feel stronger and and I know that he's always with us and my baby also for his guidance I I could I was so lost in life but he's always with me and my family and in here too and I really praise the fellowship of this church it's so great thank you amen somebody else who else just raise your hand up all over here all right I'm going to get my exercise today. Here you go, Floyd. Just to kind of quote a guest speaker we had at the church a while back, I thank God for our abundance. Mm -hmm. Just being born in the United States of America, Amen. we've won the lottery. So be thankful for that. Amen. Amen. Who else? Right here. All right, Joe, here you go, buddy. 
I work for Ruby's Pantry, and I'm also a, a manager of one of our warehouses in Wapaka. And we had a surprise inspection by the USDA come in, and they found a lot of stuff wrong because it's a very old warehouse and all the regulations have been updated. So we had to update the entire warehouse to these new standards or we wouldn't be open for business. And just to show you that the God is the God, is the God of details, one of the things we had to do was re-insulate with this certain foil-backed insulation the entire warehouse, which would cost a fortune because ours was torn. Well, we get donations from different manufacturers around the country. And the very next week, uh, our people called me and said, we just got cases and cases and cases of this product. We have no idea what to do with. <laughs> so I went to the warehouse, and we tore open the cases. And here it was, case after case after case of insulated foil insulation that we could recover the entire warehouse with. When it came in, all the people in our warehouse said, oh great, another tremendous blessing. <laughs> what are we gonna do with this? <laughs> Except take up more warehouse space. And then we realized with a little creativity and some metal foil tape, we covered over everything in the warehouse and the inspectors walked in and went, how did you do that? And we said, God. <laughs> So God is, is in every detail. Amen. Amen. Somebody else. Who's next? Oh, Jason. There you go. So uh, praising the Lord. I mean, it, it's in every detail of life. I think one of the hardest things as an individual is we get complacent. Maybe mm -hmm. we get lazy. And our vision becomes tunnel or focused on what's not working, what's not right. But uh, the Lord is gracious, and sometimes he opens our eyes to see what's right in front of us. And I really appreciate my wife and my kids. I appreciate my church, my job. You know, once you start praising the Lord, the joy just continues to grow in your heart. Um, so I just want to praise God that he takes the time with each of us to be patient with us, to be forgiving, and uh, to be generous. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Somebody else? I thought I'd grab it quick while Absolutely. you were right I'd here. <laughs> okay, i got to put my glasses on. can't see the teardrop. Anyway, besides the pardon, protection, and provisions that Pastor mentioned, um, I am also very grateful for God's personality, promises, and his power. And they are just awesome to just spend time in God's word and be filled up to overflowing and pass that on to other people, the hope that we have in Jesus. Amen. It's a blessing. Amen. Sally? Sally. Yep, it's on. Okay. Uh, the Lord for this church. Um, it's so evident, and you can feel the love in this church. But uh, also, I want to praise God for his timing, mm. because I had asked for a vacation to see my dad last December, and it didn't work out, and I was disappointed. But uh, next month, I get to go see my son in Georgia first, and then from there, I come back and we work for a week, and then I will fly out, and I will actually take my two girls with me to see my dad, because um, he's doing well. Um, just praise him for his provision for making this happen, but also the opportunity to hopefully lead him to the Lord. Born, you know, Catholic, not devout, not practicing, but he knows there is God. And I know that, you know, when my mom, before this happened, before she passed away, I was able to lead her to the Lord. And I, want, I would like to have that same opportunity when I see my dad this time. So that's a prayer. Thank you so much. So to begin with, when I wanted to do something to please God, it was all of the things that was expected, and I decided that love would be the most important. Well, that is the hardest, and I kept on failing about that, and then there became a time, a beautiful, beautiful time when God actually showed me, I mean, of course it was always there, but showed me personally his love for me 
you know, all the things that I've done wrong and all the time that I've wasted. And that little pea brain that I had, then I began to understand about how to love because I knew I was love. And every single day and every mistake I made, I just feel I'm loved more instead of less. I d it's beautiful. And I praise him and honor him for that and so much more. So, all of you know, well, most of you know, I had surgery on May 30th, and um, I kind of got really down in the mully grubs um, at my last appointments, because honestly, I was ticked. <laughs> I just wanted to walk, and um, I've been reading the 545s, and I was reading this psalm this week, and I was encouraged to stop thinking about all the negative, but to think about the positive and to praise God for where I have come. And so I praise God that almost nine weeks ago, I couldn't take one step, but yesterday I did 2,500 steps. <laughs> and um, <coughs> I still have to use crutches but I don't have to use pillows to get inside my house or outside my house. I don't have to go downstairs in my bottom anymore. And um, so I just made a list because I was so focused on what I couldn't do and I needed to focus on how far he's brought me. <laughs> and so if you'd still pray, I'd appreciate that. Um, but I just wanna praise God for where he has brought us from even when there's still frustration. Um, there, there's been a situation that has caused me a lot of um, personal grief, and I don't see things changing, and I don't see things improving and I feel like I'm pretty powerless in the situation. And uh, in talking with two different friends, one reminder was, well, you know, the story's not over. And the other said that um, God had challenged her to thank him for what he was doing that she couldn't see. And so I just want to praise God that the story is not over and that he is working in areas that I can't see. I just want to praise God for the next generation of believers that is coming up. Um, it's, it's just really exciting to me to see kids get excited about the word, get excited about discipling, um, even in the understanding that they have, and um, so that's that's been really really wonderful for me to see in the in the camp setting and in our frontline group. Um, and I think I'm very challenged to pray for this next generation um, with the challenges that they have. But it's just exciting to see kids get excited about um, the Lord. And I want to echo what Jane said too. Um, I have a situation that is. You know, it doesn't feel, you know, I think you used to think, well, if I pray hard enough, I do all these things, God's going to take this, this pain away or this thing away. And I think um, it's just precious to seek 
God's word and find that he doesn't, he promises trouble. <laughs> in, this tro in this world, you'll have trouble, but I have overcome the world. And he promises that his presence will always be with us. And we just need to just hang on to that presence. And um, I'm just been excited about getting more, e thinking more eternally and realizing this is small and that is big. Um, and so, anyway, thanks, thanks for that word. Uh, I remember a song said, God said, sometimes God calms the storm, but other times he calms the storm. Isn't that true? Sometimes God takes it all. Sometimes he lets us walk away with his presence. And either way. I don't think there's enough time in one day for me to praise God for all he's done for me in my life. But I praise him for first taking me out of New York and leading me here, where in New York my life was spiraling downhill. He's given me a life here that's unbelievable. He led me to this non-Jewish girl who I have a family with now. He led me to this church where I, I, I can find no other place to share the word of God with. And most of all, he is the highest, the most powerful. And I thank him for having his hand stretched out for me to grab onto 11 years ago and come to the Lord. And one other thing, I thank him for having all the time that he gives me to have a relationship with him each day. Uh, Janine made me cry already, so I'm having a little, <laughs> having a little trouble. Uh, I have a big thing coming up in my life, and it's amazing how, yeah, I'm not going to make it without crying. Um, it's amazing how you, we expect God to answer our, my, our prayers when you walk with him for so many years, and yet when we look at how we did it, we go, wow, that, that was just unbelievable. No, it's not. It's believable. It's believable. Um, I have a brother that I haven't heard from since he came back, a uh, wounded veteran from Vietnam. And that's about 40 years. And recently I turned 70. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and my kids asked me what I wanted for my birthday and I said, I really still want to find him. I really want to find him. And my daughter-in-law, I'm not allowed to say this either, but her brother is a um, sergeant in a police department and he broke the rules and he searched and he searched till he found him. And in the meantime, my, my kids had uh, asked us to go to the Black Hills on vacation with them this year. And when we found out where he was, he's in Casper, Wyoming. It's three and a half hours from where we're already going, where we already had plans to go. And um, I don't know how that'll be. I don't know what that will be, but I know it's God ordained because of the way that he brought it about. And I, uh, the, you know all the, some of the other praises that we've had in our life and um, some of the miracles, and God gets the glory. Thanks. I just wanted to praise God for the youth group that's here that have been a major part of my kid's life, and I've told several of you what's happened recently, and I wanted to share that with everybody. Uh, how lucky we are to have this group of people here that are so bound in scrip scripture and teaching to the kids. Um, have had real life conversations with my kids on, you know, how how life should work out and things that you should do. And several times it's been, hey, Dad, that's great. That's almost exactly what Janine told me. <laughs> that's similar to what Andrews told me. That's the same thing, Joel. So for everybody here. The more people that they can hear these teachings from, the better. Um, also, for me, for my family, uh, the fellowship that I've had with several people here and families um, that I haven't seen for, you know, came back to Pine City. I went to school here. Uh, Reed and Jesse, Jason, Julie, Pete. I'm going to forget people. Nate, everybody who's been a part of my life and, you know, has reached out to me for fellowship. I praise God for that. Marcy, I'll tell you, I said to uh, Ross, I said, now if 
this word fabric today, I'm going to preach half the message and the church is going to preach the rest of it. And it's it's good. Amen. So I just want to praise God for being the God of impossible situations. Um, Last year, Jamie and I were separated for about eight months and now we're back together and things are great. And all those times when you feel like everything is way beyond fixing, God comes through and Jason said, opens up your eyes and you see what's been right in front of you all the time. And he can restore anything. Sweet. 